Father Julius Orach, the Dean of the Doctor, the Julius of Vision, and a member of the Government Council, naturally, in this season. This hour that you have guided us here for a very important mission. Lord, we pray that may you send for the Spirit to come and guide us in whatever that you are going to present and to guide each and every one of us in each and everything that we are going to do. May you guide us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Francis, and thank you to you, dear friends. I should have been a part of you. You all know this one. <laughs> because you had asked me to act a role of being like a, a father to you. But at this moment, I'm acting as chair of the Chile Religious Leaders Peace Initiative. So we want to make a press statement. Not a press conference, we are not for a press conference, but we want to make a statement which should be also aired to the public to give their own comments about it and form their own opinions about it. And it is very important to us. So I will take it. The title is very clear. Uh, press statement from Achille Religious Leaders Peace Initiative on the planned removal of the age limit for president or presidency. The Achille Religious Leaders Peace Initiative is an interfaith peace building organization bringing together the Muslims and the Christians, that is Catholics, Orthodox, Anglicans, SDA, and Buffet. Buffet stands for Born Again Federation. These leaders in the northern Uganda, they have come together to promote reconciliation, peace building activities. It was formed in 1997 and formally inaugurated in 1998. 
to provide a proactive response to the conflict in northern Uganda in the areas of peace building and the reconciliation, advocacy and the lobbying, and the women empowerment. A deeper insight into what is going on. Article 2000, I mean 102B, and other relevant provisions of the law. We observe with deep concern the tense and the volatile atmosphere that has been created by the planned amendment of Article 200, I mean 102B of the 1995 Uganda Constitution. As religious leaders and the spiritual, we are the voice of the voiceless and the conscience of the nation. Our role is to adv advise the citizens of Uganda to stand on the basis of truth in this matter, since the Bible teaches that whoever has the truth has the courage is a majority. We go to Article 102. We quote it fully. The qualification of the president are provided in the Constitution of 1995, Article 102, as follows. A person is not qualified for election as president unless that person is a citizen of Uganda by birth. B, not less than 35 years and not more than 75 years of age. And then C, a person qualified to be a member of parliament. Now the question that remains is if someone who has reached the age of 75 and cannot contest to be president of Uganda, then what is the fate of that someone who has attained the age of 75 when he's still holding the office of the president? Does it mean he has to retire and resign the office of the president or wait to finish his term for terms of office? Let's take the example of Uganda. The current president of Uganda is 73 years old, meaning he will clock 75 years while holding the office of the president. But what is the controversial is, will he serve for only the period he is below 75 and retire, or will he have to finish these terms of office? Well, this is what might happen in the provision is to be interpreted from a legal point of view. The 1995 uh, Uganda Constitution provides that a person holds a public office or employed in the civil service will retire upon reaching the required age. But the same Constitution of Uganda says it that it is silent about the Article 102b as for the fate of someone who will reach 75 years while holding the office of the president. I hope you are following me closely. Taking an example from the judicial arm of the government of Uganda, Article 144 of the Constitution provides that the Chief Justice shall, upon reaching the age of 70, retire from his or her office. For example, the former Chief Justice of Uganda, Justice, Lord Justice, Mr. Benjamin Odoki, reached the retired age of 70 and he duly retired. However, the President of the Republic of Uganda
tried to extend his terms of office. And the matter went to the Constitutional Court for the interpretation. In the case of Gerald Karuhanga versus Attorney General, the court ruled that once you reach the retirement age, you vacate the office of employment. The same law should apply to the office of the president of Uganda at the age of 75. The retirement age according to 1995 Uganda Constitution. For this reason, very reason, the citizens of Uganda should petition the Constitutional Court to give the interpretation to this article before the Constitution is amended. Any amendment of the 1995 Uganda Constitution which shall be intended to affect a court decision shall have no legal effect whatsoever. The question of treason and of defense of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, Article 3 of the Constitution provides that any person who singly or in concert with other by a violent means or unlawful means suspends or throws or abrogates or amends any part of the Constitution shall commit the offense of treason and shall be punished in accordance with the law. This is Article 3 of our Constitution. This means the deployment of the military police and army using tear gas and all possible intimidation to effect the amendment of the Article 102b is violent and tantamount to treason. Article 3, sub-Article 4, empowers the citizens of Uganda to resist any person from unlawful overthrow of the Constitution. This means that demonstrating in the protest of the amendment of the Article 102b is lawful under the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda since it is a done to protect the constitutional provision. The question of the presidential immunity and defense of the Constitution. The president is immune from any criminal and civil suit while holding office as president according to Article 98 of the Constitution, subtitle or Article 4 of the Constitution. However, Article 3 creates an offense of treason. That is, that any person who singly or in concert with other by a violent means or other unlawful means suspends, overthrows, or abrogates, or amends any part of the Constitution shall commit the offense of treason and shall be punished in accordance with the law. This means that amending Article 102B of the Constitution forcefully clearly amounts to the offense of treason. This is contrary to Article 3 of the Constitution. If it is done by the President, does it mean Article 3 shall override Article 98, subsection 4 of the Constitution? Can a criminal suit of treason be instituted against the person of the President of the Republic of Uganda? We are put in question. Our humble suggestion, therefore, are this one. The citizens of the Republic of Uganda should petition the Constitutional Court to give the interpretation of this article before the Constitution is amended. Any amendment shall be intended to affect a court decision shall be null and void. This is suggestion one. Our second suggestion, amendment of Article 102B of the 1995 Uganda Constitution is not an urgent matter for Uganda. Now because there are other biting issues such as poverty, youth unemployment, conflicts that are already polarizing. However, if 
really the amendment are required, then it must be done with due consultation of the citizens of Uganda from the word go, because the constitution is for the entire people of Uganda, but not for just a few individual persons in Uganda. All our member of parliament or members of parliament are potential leaders in any position of the leadership in Uganda. We regret the violence that marred the parliamentary session of Tuesday, 26 September 2017 and Wednesday, 27 September and urge both parties to desist from such violence, but exercise political maturity, tolerance, and embrace dialogue as the best means to restore their differences. This is because every human person is a child of God, created in the image of God. Thus, every human person is gifted and talented by the gracious God. In this content, therefore, every human person in the world has the potential to lead any position of leadership. The whole world will definitely judge the 10th parliament of Uganda very harshly if it makes the mistake of amending Article 102 of the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda for selfish end rather than for the public good and interest. Number three, suggestion number three. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda has all the moral obligation and the responsibilities to, to keep his name and the reputation from all these messes in order to leave a legacy of good leadership in Uganda and the world at large. We therefore call him, pronounce himself to save Uganda from further embarrassment. As religious and spiritual leaders, we therefore invoke the power of the Holy Spirit. All the leaders of Uganda at all levels, with the effect for LC1, all through to the President of the Republic of Uganda, to take control of them so that they are able to think about preserving Uganda for a shared future destiny for our posterity. Sincerely, John Baptist Odamba, Archbishop Gulu, Chairman of RP, on behalf of the following Sheikh Halhaji Musa Kelil, who at the moment is in bed, but he has had a very clear stand about this. Then, Reverend, Right Reverend Johnson. Gakumba of the Diocese of Northern Uganda, member of the Governing Council, Monsignor Matthew Udon, uh, member of the Governing Council, Monsignor Vincent Ojok, also member of the Governing Council, Father Julius Orach, who is here, uh, the retired Bishop McLeod Becker Chola, who is uh, at the moment in Kampala, the Right Reverend Benjamin Ujuan, who is not here but is there. He has known about this and he is fully aware we have put our heads together. Then the retired Bishop Nelson of Norway, a member of this government council. Then Pastor Thomas Thompson Ayeni of the Seven Adventists, who is here present, and Pastor Patrick Okecha, who is not here, but we all put our heads and put these points for the people of Uganda to think critically. Thank you for your attention, press. Thank you, to your dear listeners. So, our moderator. Thank you, as we for presenting this statement. As we said, we are not going to have a lot of discussion over this because it is written that we shall give time to you to ask a question or two.
think there's no question. Yes. There's no question. It's clear. It's straightforward. Yes, straightforward. Yes, thank you. So thank you. Thank you. We hosting us. We shall be here in the comments of it. <laughs> Including yourself. Including yourself, yes. Thank you for your work. Eh? Okay. Yes. Work. Help Uganda not to go into flames over this issue. Yeah. Especially for your youth. Yes, the youth, the young people. Okay, thank you. Thank you.